Hey yo, how you doing YouTube? Welcome back to Gaming Rants. Welcome back to the channel. How you doing today? Hope everybody is well and staying safe. Thanks so much for the support on the segment and the channel. Guys, I really do appreciate you all every day and um, thank you so much. I've only seen at the time of recording the first episode uh, feedback of Gaming Rants. So big shout out to uh, Chaos and Fallout, Dave, Quick Smoke, little Mikey and I, Stella. Thank you so, so much for making uh, comments on the segment. I always love it when I get a slightly different point of view from my own. It's how we all learn. And um, yeah, the, the response to the first video was very, very healthy and hopefully you can build on it with the next couple. So um, one thing I would like to ask you, and I don't really like asking this too often, but if you guys could help me out, given that it's a new segment, I want to get as much of the gaming community as possible involved in the discussions that we raise and the points that we raise. So if I could ask you to share it out on your own networks, on your own socials, I would really, really much appreciate it, retweeting and um, sharing it on your discords and whatnot. I really do want to get as many people in the community involved in the discussions as possible. Um, that's the only reason that I'm asking. I don't normally ask for this kind of help, but um, it is a new um, segment and for it to be successful, I need to get the support of the community. Okay, so having said that, uh, as you would have seen, the new format, we are running kind of every fortnight at the moment, um, and we'll just see how that works. Uh, as it, as things go through, obviously the subjects that I'm covering are get, going to get less and less and less. So I do need your suggestions on things that you would like me to cover in this segment. And um, if we start to run out of content, then we, we will maybe just do it once a month or whatever. Also want to do some re uh, a review show. I'm not sure how often that will happen, but I want to look at back at um, maybe three or four episodes and just review those and, and highlight your comments about those. Wow, that was a lot for an opening segment. So what are we going to cover today? Well, today we are going to cover something that I think from our point of view, is a little bit of a holy grail for gaming, and that is cross-play. And uh, we're going to discuss the ins and outs of cross-play, explain what it's about, um, talk about all the positives about it, and a few things that maybe have come up in the last year that uh, you know some of the developers didn't anticipate and are having to combat, and the way forward for cross-play in the gaming community. Hope you're going to enjoy this one. Okay, so what is crossplay? Well, effectively, it is um, the ability to play a particular game on any platform or play on various platforms. Play the same game, be in the same environment, but on different platforms. What do we mean by platforms? Well, I've got to say, my uh, view on this was fairly narrow until I'd done a little bit of research. <laughs> I did do research. I do research for the show, I do. I seriously do. So, yeah, my, my view and my, I guess that it was around what I wanted to achieve from crossplay um, and not what it is broadly. Um, for me, all I want to do really with crossplay is I want to play with my, my, my friends and my community, my gaming community, um, console to console. So, I'd love to play, for instance, Fallout 76 with all my PS4. Four friends. I'd love also to play Borderlands with my PS4 friends. So that was kind of my view and my focus about what I wanted at crossplay. But crossplay is much, much broader than that. And it is also, I guess, a little bit more complex than that. And we will talk about that as we go through. So, okay, so let's see if we can rattle off a few examples. So I was thinking way back about a year ago I, I got first got introduced to crossplay or at least that was I thought that was my first uh, introduction to crossplay and that was uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare um where in it and I've got to say with that game the crossplay in that game just works flawlessly where you can play with either PlayStation players or you can play with PC players and the PC player element was not something that I'd ever really considered 
in my kind of view of crossplay, which is, is a bit naive of me, but it really, like I said, my focus was I wanted to play with my friends on PlayStation. So, it you know, they introduced that um, in 2019, late 2019, and it worked flawlessly. I, I know that Mikey and Volgaro and a few others were all involved in the kind of alpha and beta testing of that game, and it just works. It just works flawlessly. What I'd like to do, though, is take an example of one of the most popular games in the world at the moment, which is a Fortnite Battle Royale Fortnite game, which is a free-to-download game and actually covers a whole lot of platforms. And, and I think if you're looking for an example of pure cross-play game, uh, Fortnite is, is it, to be honest. So you can play it on Xbox, you can play it on PlayStation, play it on PC, you can play it on Switch, and you can also play it on mobile devices. So all your Apple ISO devices, all your Android devices, tablets, phones, you name it, you can play it. So I think as far as pure cross-play, Fortnite is the best example that I could find. Now, there is a little um, thing that is developing on the Xbox side of things, um, which makes I think Microsoft very strong in in as much as giving their um, their customers cross play over a whole range of things. And um, I'm going to take Sea of Thieves as, uh, and I know a number of you play Sea of Thieves. I'm going to take Sea of Thieves as an example here. But that game is an Xbox One exclusive. However, if you have a Windows 10 PC, you can also play it on um, Windows 10 and play with Xbox players. And Microsoft have done a huge, huge um, favor to the community by doing this because a, a lot of people around the world have um, Windows 10 installed on the PC. Whether they have a gaming spec computer is another story and we'll get to that in a while. But you know, if you can think of the number of people that have Windows PCs versus the number of people that have Xboxes, I'm sure it's, I, I don't know what the numbers would be, but I'm sure it's. there's much more chance of people having a Windows PC that has Windows 10 installed in it versus an Xbox. I, I know a lot of people that have Playstations would have a, a desktop computer um, or even a laptop or whatever that has Windows installed. So if you do, you have access to virtually the whole Xbox One library or the Xbox library that you can play and you can play online and play cross-play with your friends um, playing on Xbox on Windows. So um, that's interesting. The Switch is an interesting one. Um, it's a fairly new console. It has got some restrictions about it because of the way that the uh, hardware and FPS and everything else is set up on the Switch. But it certainly is uh, possible to play cross-play with the Switch. So what further complicates this uh, whole cross-play scenario, and hence why it's probably... I think we're in the very early phases of cross-play. I think with the, the uh, you know invent of games that are online based more and more server based uh, cross play has to come um, as a kind of stock standard addition to every game for the future at least that's my view and that's my opinion that this will start to evolve in the next not maybe two to five years the cross play will be in most or the majority of games that have an online component to them and allow you to play um, you know, there is a little bit of a complication and we're about to see it again um, coming in November in that, okay, you have cross-play, but you also have um, cross-generational uh, platforms. So what do I mean by cross-generational platforms? Well, you have the PS3, you have the Xbox 360, you have Xbox One, you have PS4, and then now we're going to have um, PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Um, and if you look at that, that's going to be cross-generational uh, technology. You've also got the fact that, um, you know, we talked about mobile devices like tablets and phones. I'm sure there's a whole raft of different technologies and ages to 
a whole lot of different mobile um, devices, as there will be in um, PCs. Uh, you know, your your Windows PC and laptop will all be specced differently and have different capabilities and hardware to run um, games. And as of, as we have seen um, in the the most recent thing, recent games that have come out um, for us in the last couple of years. So games are getting more and more sophisticated. You, get, you can physically see the size of them is getting larger and larger and larger. Um, obviously, the way that they look is getting, you know, we're, we're up to 4K now. Um, you know, 720 at 30 frames was a fairly good standard. <laughs> if I think back to the 8-bit and 16-bit games, we've come a long way. But the way that games look are, are much more cinematic now. And you need the processing power to, to run those. So, you know, there is a lot of issues for devs developing games with a cross-play component in them. Um, obviously, with the new generation of consoles coming out, that's going to be less of a um, thing for newer games. But at the same time, you know, if you look at um, Xbox One, how old that is, how old, playstation 4 is the same thing is going to happen to the the newer generation consoles that technology is going to get old and if you know anything about computing you know that there's always the processors and you know the memory and all the ram and all that the the, the ongoing development of those com components hardware components and motherboards and all kinds of stuff is happens pretty quickly and you can buy a pc today in a year it's out of date so I'm sure the gaming PC community will tell you about how updating your uh, your gaming PC or building a new gaming PC, you have to do it way, way ahead in the future. And even if you do, you know, that there are always new technologies coming along. So I guess that is a bit of a challenge um, um, for developer development companies to give us cross play, but I haven't looked at uh, you know, haven't looked at uh, modern warfare and how they've done it and how they've they've incorporated it into a battle royale, and now with the new Cold War coming through, that will have cross play also. Um, it can be done, it can be done, but it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money. So, um, the majority of companies that are doing it are the more the triple A's and the bigger companies that have the budget to do it. One of the benefits of crossplay, though, is that you know games that would normally probably have a small, small kind of following on one platform or individual platform. So I don't know, I, I don't know an example of a game, but um, you know, you might have a small community playing it on PlayStation, a small community playing it on Xbox, and maybe even PC. If you if you combine those, plus Switch possibly, if you combine those together, then it becomes much more of a viable game, and actually might grow in popularity. So some of the, the games that are smaller, and the independent games, may have more of a chance with a cross-play element in them, uh, built into them. Also, I would think... And I'm not sure how exactly this works, but I would think there would be a case um, for cost savings, money savings, and centralized servers for a game if it was cross-play, as opposed to having a set of servers for Xbox, a set of servers for PlayStation, a set of servers for PC, a set of servers for Switch, a set of servers for mobile. I would think there would be a case where crossplay would would optimize uh, your server and server capacity in the way that you that the dev companies manage their server um, requirements instead of having individual platform server requirements. I would like to hear um, from anybody that knows a little bit more about that if that is the case and if they know a little bit more about that. I am assuming that that. Is certainly going to be a something that could be very positive about crossplay going forward. So I guess in a utopia where there are rainbows and unicorns, uh, every company would offer us um, up a crossplay uh, selection in our games. But uh, as I said, it, it, there is a, a fairly hefty cost to developing that and maintaining it. I guess also there's there's to some degree some IP 
issues around crossplay and protecting people's networks and all. We we live in a um, we live in an environment now where, and we've seen it in quite quite regularly in the last few years where PlayStation Network, Xbox Live have been hacked. And I, I guess there is always that element of problem that it might ha- it might then present vulnerabilities to entire networks rather than being confined to one network. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there are some... Um, some challenges the big one of the biggest challenges that we've seen in the last year especially on call of duty modern warfare is something that i must admit i didn't consider it would would come with crossplay but that is the fact that people are hacking and cheating on that game in huge numbers now i've got to say that Part of this is a social problem um, and something that's been created in the last maybe little while with especially, and I'm not picking on the younger generation, but certainly that's where it's coming from, where we have this culture of um, people always wanting views and likes. And many of us are YouTubers, so we understand this a lot that, you know, but for, for younger, the younger generation it's it's almost a peer thing where they they seek and desire likes on their photos on Instagram, their tweets on Twitter, whatever it might be, you know that recognition, and so, um, the cheating element is part of that. It's something that I've ne- look cheating on something like Call of Duty is not new. Let's get that out there. I I've seen. You know, black. I think back to Black Ops Two, for instance. That game was unplayable sometimes because the, because of people cheating. So it's this is not new, but it is a little bit of a disease that's come through with the crossplay on Modern Warfare. And um, you know, unfortunately, and again, I'm not having a go at the um, PC community as a whole, but unfortunately, there is a small minority of people. With the and more majority seems to be coming from the um, PC players that have the ability to um, access cheats and implement them into the game. Now, having said that, there is, and I'm I'm not going to give the companies that that produce some of these these products any airtime. I tell you who they are, but there is um, something that's readily available. So there, there. I mean, there's a whole discussion about what I'm about to say, but there, there is a particular product that you can basically um, clip on to your um, controller, what, whatever it might be, PlayStation or Xbox or whatever, and you can program a whole lot of things in. Um, I think that's maybe a, another discussion together with scuff controllers and whatnot, but. You can do that, and then there's a number of sites around the place that that offer cheats. And um, yeah, I don't think it's healthy. I've never ever understood what what people get out of cheating a, a game. I I mean, I play video games personally. I play video games um, for the uh, competitive element, for my personal competitive competitive element to see if I can beat a game on my own. I don't without any help. Um, Sure, we all get stuck on video games at times, and uh, maybe go on to YouTube now um, and and just try and figure out a particular uh, spot we're stuck at. Um, you know that's been going back for years. We're used to get these written walkthroughs. Um, yeah, we all need help from time to time, but to be consistently uh, cheating on the game and knowingly cheating, and and you know that this in recent. Uh, weeks and, and even today I read a story about a Twitch streamer um, that just got banned and there's been a couple in the last couple of weeks um, for blatantly cheating and you know these guys are online making out that they are a huge boss player they're you know the top of the game fantastic player at Call of Duty and there they are they're actually cheating and it really takes away from those players that are, are, are actually good at the game and it ruins it for everybody so I'd, 
and some people find that amusing that it, that people are raging and they they get upset. Um, but it, I, I just don't understand what there is to gain from that. But you know, so so it um, so it happens and it's a thing. And I've got to give big props to Activision uh, this year because Activision have um, obviously they've opened the can of worms that is crossplay, but they've been very proactive. And going after um, people that are cheating, detecting people that are cheating, and actually banning them from the game. Um, and I'm not sure if that's Modern Warfare or if that's all Call of Duties, because one of the things that uh, Modern Warfare requires is a Activision account, which is a centralized account, regardless of what platform you're on. So you have to register with Activision. So I would suspect that its potential, the potential is that not only if you're cheating, you could get banned from, um, we'll take Modern Warfare as, as the example of Modern Warfare, but you might get banned from all Call, Call of Duties that are online based, So, which is the majority of them. Um, so it, it, it really is not worth it. They've actually gone after a number of companies legally and uh, yeah, with cease and desist notices. And in fact, that's been enough to... Um, it's been enough to shut down one particular company. And I read again today where a, a company was offering some cheats on, under the uh, under the marketing that it was not detectable by um, Activision or whoever. Activision have found a way around it and they have been able to detect this particular one. And um, now the people that were using it are complaining because... They paid money for cheating, the ability to cheat at Modern Warfare, and now they've all been banned. So there was like 20,000 people banned straight off the, the rip um, once the, the Activision was able to detect this particular cheat engine. And, um, you know, reading a lot of comments, um, it, it, it seems to be that Activision will will detect you doesn't matter what you're using they will be eventually they will find you and there is no discussion if you're found cheating you're banned and you're banned for life and that's it game over you won't play that game again um i guess you could set up a new account and play but there again if you want to play cross play again you have to register with activision so it's quite a good little system that they have running i think for me personally we haven't played that game um it's a lot easier. There's a lot easier solution for developers, and this is my, there's a couple of solutions that I personally think that that could be uh, that you could put in. Number one with uh, Modern Warfare, playing it on Xbox, I have the ability to switch on and off crossplay, which is fantastic. I would like another one more option, please, Activision, and that's to be able to switch off uh, either um, PlayStation or pc if i can if i if i can just choose that i only want to play with my friends on playstation um then that would be fantastic i guess the problem is when you go back if we go back to fortnite then you'd have to have several buttons for the different platforms which i guess is a bit untenable so maybe they need to have a, a switch for you know for pc one for uh, PlayStation from an Xbox perspective, it would be obviously PlayStation it would be an Xbox button, but um, and then another another button for everything else, mobile and Switch and stuff. So that's one solution. Another thing, if I think about something like a Fallout seventy six, for example, then you know they have introduced private servers, then that would fix the problem for us because I know there's a number of us in the community, the Fallout community, that already have private servers. And just adding that ability to play cross-play but within a private server would also solve the problem and we'd have a huge world all to ourselves. So I would really like to hear your views on cross-play, whether you think it's a positive or a negative, um, especially this cheating element. Is it something that you maybe have something that you think you could um, offer that is another solution to um, shutting out the cheaters? I think you know the, the way that Activision have handled it is perfect because um, the more companies that can do that that have crossplay, 
um, uh, people will get the message. Also, some news, Borderlands 3 are talking about adding a cross-play element. So, Volt Girl, Plasma, and all you guys that play um, Borderlands on PS4, there may be an opportunity for us to play together in the future. So, that's all I had to say about cross-play. I do love cross-play. It is something that I want to see more and more for the future. Um, it's not without its challenges, but I think uh, the large majority of what crossplay offers is a very positive thing. Okay, guys, thanks for joining us on the segment. Hopefully, you've stayed to the end. A like rating is always appreciated. It really does help this channel immensely. Your comments help this channel immensely. And as I said at the start of the video, if you can share this out in the socials to help this segment get some momentum and get more people involved in the discussion, I would really, really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. I'll catch you next time.